Hi, I'm Turner. And I'm Elmer Fudd. <laughs> <laughs> Snoring George Institute. <laughs> the Snoring George Institute. <laughs> Word of the video is ubiquitous, present, appearing, or found everywhere. His ubiquitous influence was felt by all the family. A way that we could use this word ubiquitous is to say the 350 legend is on the verge of becoming ubiquitous in that it soon could be found everywhere as it gains more popularity. Hi, I'm Turner. And I'm Will. And this is Indian Hen Outdoors. Today, we're gonna to be diving into some older cartridges, specifically big game cartridges, some North American big game cartridges. We've already reviewed some break barrels, the CVA Scout to be exact. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. We've got the CVA Scout again in 35 Wayland, which is one of the cartridges we want to go into. And then we've got a handy rifle chambered in 444 Marlin. So for starters, the 35 Wayland. We're going to give you a little history and backstory about this cartridge. Um, Will, you want to go into that? You know a lot about 35 Wayland. All right, we're going to set the stage. We are in post-World War I era. You know, all these soldiers are coming back home. You know, after you've been out... Uh, Trudging through the mud and the trenches. What what would you want to do when you got home, Turner? You'd want to do activities you did as a child. Yeah, makes sense. You would want to go out into the field, mm -hmm. hunting, gathering game, uh, and a lot of that also had to do with uh, necessity. You had you had this uh, influx of soldiers returning home, and also a mass surplus of 1903 battle rifles. And a lot of them began the process of sporterizing these 1903s to resemble more of a hunting rifle. A gentleman by the name of Townsend Way Whalen, he was a colonel in the US military, uh, is also a famous hunter, wrote, wrote multiple books. He was, a, he was a fan of carrying a sporterized 1903 rifle. And he came up with the idea of wanting to enlarge that uh, the projectile from a 30 caliber cartridge to possibly a 35 caliber cartridge. With that, Townsend Whalen, who was this avid outdoorsman and sharpshooter, this man was said to carry a pack that only weighed 10 to 12 pounds. And he would take this little pack that was literally a few tools and a lean-to, and he would survive for weeks at the time in the Canadian wilderness, a real man's man. At this period of time we're talking about, he was working at a place called the Frankfurt Arsenal with a man named James Howe. If that name sounds familiar, it's of Griffin and Howe, the firearms manufacturer. So Townsend Whalen and James Howe uh, began experimenting with necking up and down 30 6 casings. It was actually James Howe who was making the cartridge, but Whalen was there giving his input. So that gave us the 35 Whalen, a 35 caliber bullet in a 30 out 6 case with a ton of powder behind it. All right, so we've talked about 35 Wayland, and we'll get into its capabilities in a minute. The other cartridge we want to talk about is the 444 Marlin. You don't see a whole lot of these cartridges anymore, and here's why. In the 1960s, the 4570 government had all but ceased production. Nobody was making these firearms or making any ammunition for them. They had ceased to exist. So the need for a large big bore cartridge for whitetail hunters or big game hunters in North America, there was a void left. And so people at Marlin started experimenting and eventually created the 444. If you look at a 444 and a 4570, Ballistically, they're kind of similar, and size-wise, now in 2024, you're kind of like, why do we need both of these? Well, at the time, the 4570 didn't exist anymore, so that's why it was produced. So a 444 is a lengthened 44 Magnum case. It's the same rim, same diameter, if you will. But let's go over here to the table and look at both of these cartridges. So first up, we have the 35 Wayland. Again, it is a 30 alt 6 case, and it's been necked up to fit the 35 caliber bullet. This family of cartridges, whether it be 35 Whalen, 30 alt 6 uh, 270, 25 alt 6 these are not going to be a super long-range round. They can shoot on out to 1,000 yards, but you have a lot of drop. So when, when I say big-game cartridge, 
for both of these. We're talking about inside of 250 yards because of the amount of drop. If you're going to go shoot an elk at 1,500 yards, this is probably not an efficient, you know, tool. This is a 250-yard in hunting moose, bear, whatever. Up next, again, 444 Marlin, same thing. Probably 250 yards or less. Great big game cartridge. You can take anything in North America with this. Just a massive bullet. Again, that lengthened 44 Magnum case. There we go. All right, we're about to send some jugs to the promised land with the 444. Uh, thanks, Sam, for lending me your rifle. Putting it to good use. Ready? Ready. <laughs> oh my gracious, that's awful. All right, give us thoughts on as far as tameness and recoil on that from the 35. Well, going, I shot the 35 in our other video. There is no comparison. The 35 Wayland, even though it's, it's loud, um, let me take my ears off. I'm not shouting. Even though it's loud, the. Uh, the amount of recoil and the amount of concussion, no comparison. This uh, this 444, it keeps you in the teeth. Ready. That hurts. That hurts the sheep, fellas. Ready? Ready. Well, the cat flew further with the 35 Wayland. It's just, it's just not that fun to shoot anymore. No. It, I it's, agree. It's sad. It's sad, but let me put it up here. I'm not getting rid of mine yeah. by no means. But, uh, it's sad, and again, we're not, I'm not trying to trash the, the handy rifle, but a big bore handy rifle, specifically like this, this in 45, 70, or 444, shooting something smaller like a 350 Legend or even this 35 Wayland, which Ballistically, it's probably got more oomph behind it than even this big cartridge. It, the CVA is more fun to shoot. Like this, <laughs> that four. Maybe I'm getting old, but the 444 is miserable to shoot. It's like getting kicked in yeah. the. I've, I've at the house got 4570 handy rifle. It's just it's not pleasant. We're gonna get a ton of comments about being a poo. As I, 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 I am. Is what it is. <laughs> I still stay under P. How about you? <laughs> So we've decided to both offhand shoot the 444, and Will kind of cringed and made a face when I said that. He's not a big, big a fan of big bore cartridges as I am, but you ready? Might as well. Oh, good grief. <laughs> I'm blind. Swing in a bit. <laughs> like I said, I'm blind. Gonna channel my inner Tom Selleck. Do my Quigley Down Under impersonation. Check and clear. <laughs> that, that was bad. That was only slightly <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> I like a boy. Like okay, let's start this over. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna check, make sure we're clear. Alright, let's get a feel on this trigger. Let's go. That's just that's nice. That's pleasant. I mean there's no no take up. It's just you're right there. There's no slack in there. Three and a half, maybe four. If you told me it's over four pounds, I, I'd be inclined to not believe you. And let's step on over here to the C, the, not the CV8, the H&R Handy Rifle. Again, we're going to clear that sucker. Coast it. Um, It's not... 
it's a tad heavy. It's probably closer to five. And it's not, I wouldn't say it's necessarily bad, but the CVA Scout has a much more comfortable impulse to it, if you will. So yeah, these are some cool cartridges. There's definitely a, a nostalgia value. And I think, again, if you want to, if you want a more affordable, big game cartridge, these are more than capable inside of 300 yards. And even further on, if you're a great marksman, you just deal with a lot of drop. But what are your thoughts on both of them? Man, no. I'm more than confident that the 444 Marlin has what it takes to take down any any game in North America. Uh, I'm not as familiar with it as I am with the 35 Wheeling. Uh, the 35 Wheeling was dubbed as the poor man's magnum and uh, both extremely capable cartridges, no doubt. And it's worth mentioning too, if there's, you may look at this and say, well, there's really no reason to have a 444 because of the re-emergence of 4570. But again, we're talking about factory ammo, which you can go and buy. We're not talking about reloading or buying the best of the best. Because 4570 has a plethora of options for ammunition. That's where it kind of wins. But if you just buy the most common ammunition, Hornady Lever Revolution in 444 or 4570, that gets you a 265 grain bullet in 444, 325 grain for the 4570. If you do that, you're buying the common, the most common of the common, the cheapest thing you can get. The 444 actually performs better in 200 yards than the 4570. It is flatter shooting, so and has more muzzle energy. Again, all things being equal, we're not talking about loading the same bullet or hand-loaded bullets. But if you're just buying what's out there, buying what you can afford, 444 is still a great cartridge to have. Until next time, I'm Turner. Well, and this has been Indian Outdoors. Thank you so much for watching. God bless.